Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Donna. I make videos about stationary things because I'm obsessed. So I really love fountain pens, writing with fountain pens. And I always say these are kind of like Crayolas for adults because you can fill them with all different kinds of inks. And I don't know, it just gives you that same sort of um, satisfaction it just makes writing a little bit more fun. So I keep um, a book log of books that I've read. This is over the past uh, couple of years. There's a list in here. So, um, but since 2023 is over, and don't look too closely at these because there's lots of spoilers in here and I wouldn't want to spoil anything for anybody um, because you know, that's not fun. So I add certain tip-ins, like I did a historical fiction readathon with, I, there's a couple of booktubers and uh, YouTube book girls that I follow. So I followed along and I just, yeah, it's one of those nerdy things. So I added a tip-in for that. But now that we're at the end of uh, the year, I... Well, we're past the end of the year. This is 2024. I wanted to put a tip in for what I thought were the best reads that I read in 2023. So these are the pens that I'm using. This is the Conklin uh, Duragraph Abalone Nights. Sorry, I want to keep that in the light because it's so pretty. Um, and the Twisby eco in cream i have a video about this I'll link it below you can hear me gripe about it a little bit it's still a great pen but that whole color issue thing is a thing uh jin how 82 i have a couple of jin how 82s i don't love them the bodies are adorable but every nib i get is or hit or miss so this is my favorite nib and it just goes from jin how to jin how I just keep swapping the nib out for the pen body that I want to use, but it takes like two seconds, so it's not a big deal. Uh, this is the Pilot Prera, and it's got a Kakuno nib on this. I just swapped that out. I have a video on that if you want to see that too. And because I didn't want to ink any more pens, I'm just using a dip nib, and I have a Faber Castell grip nib in here, and I like that nib. Um, it's one of my it's one of my favorite all time every day. I think it's a great starter pen. Doesn't get enough um, recognition in the pen community, but it's a really great little writer. So um, that's I keep that one inked in black. So these are the inks that I'm using, and I'll show you more clips of the ink as we go on. And I already swatched them. And I'll try to give um, close up of that also. Okay, so my swatches look more like an electrocardiogram. I've had too much coffee. I gotta stop. Uh, this is Tatia Ebby. Look at that sheen. Very pretty. And classic Noodler's Black Swan English Roses. Very nice wine color. KWZ Brown Pink. Robert Oster Smokescreen, 
Sometimes this pulls, depending on the paper, it pulls more gray. Very pretty color. Very interesting on different papers. And Monteverdi Rose Noir, another classic, very purple. Beautiful color. So I don't want to use fancy paper for this because I don't want to have to, you know, uh, cut it out of a notebook. So I'm just using um, some cheap paper from Staples, but I actually like this notebook a lot. And that is the brand in case you're interested. And I'm just going to put the camera up so I have two hands to use. One Second After focuses on a family in America and what happens immediately following an EMP being set off, an electromagnetic pulse, and how it affects the entire uh, infrastructure, not just communication, but food sources and medicine. So it is a very, very heavy read, and it's obviously not for everybody, so proceed with caution on that recommendation. Oops. So after reading something so heavy, it's really good to lighten up with a cozy mystery and Vera Wong's unsolicited advice for murderers was hilarious. I definitely recommend the audiobook because the inflection on um, her voice in uh, certain scenarios, she'll just, she will have you laughing. So uh, the premise is a uh, woman owns a tea shop and it becomes the case of a murder scene. And she's a woman who just sticks her nose in, <laughs> whether it belongs or not. And she becomes heavily involved in uh, this case and trying to solve what happened. And, but you come to love her and adore her and the story and all of the characters in it. It was just a really, really good read. Look at how darling this little thing is. My end frame. It's so huge. I have a Kakuno nib on this. I swapped this out just recently. Uh, so The Housemaid is a really good psychological thriller. Uh, Millie was in jail for, I think it was like 10 years. And she gets an opportunity to be a nanny for a very wealthy family who did not investigate her for reasons that will become clear later on. And as soon as she takes on the job, walls start to fall down with the uh, mom. And there's an ending I did not see coming at all. And that's what made it such a really fantastic read. In the Book of Lost Names, a woman uh, named Ava finds a coded list in a, in a book. She starts to, she tries to decipher the messages and she needs to enlist help um, to figure it out. But it's secret coded information as to what happened to some of the children uh, that were hidden from the Nazis during the time of the Holocaust. And if there's a book about the Holocaust, I'm going to read it nine times out of ten. So uh, this was definitely up there with some of the other um, really great books on that that I have read. And I highly recommend this one.
to dip my pen. That's right, because I didn't want to. I didn't want to um, ink another pen. Okay, so um, Greenwood is a, uh, it's a, it starts off a little dystopian, and I don't like, I'm really not a fan of dystopian um, novels. It's just not my thing. Um, but it begins with it and ends with it, but in the middle is this story of the, um, well, it's fictional, um, family, uh, the Greenwood family, and it's the forest empire and how it came into the hands of these people and who owned it and ran it and how it changes from different hands over, uh, many decades. And there's like a historical fiction aspect in there also, which I loved, like, wrapped right in the middle. So that was uh, a fantastic read. So uh, yeah, so these are my five favorites from uh, 2023. So that's it. And those were, the, these are the pens that I used and you saw the inks. Thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you again soon. Bye.